Hello and welcome to my uh, analysis and reading of Shakespeare's play Othello. Uh, my name is Cathy Williams de Vries and uh, we're really getting into the heart of the play now um, in uh, Act 3. So in this video I will read Act 3, scenes 1, 2 and 3. Now this is, uh, it begins the uh, the, the scene begins, uh, the act begins with a scene between Cassio and the Clown and uh, it's one of the lighter hearted moments of the play. Shakespeare um, often inserted light hearted, um, uh, light -hearted scenes just to break up what's a, a fairly serious play. And uh, the Clown is jesting with, uh, with Cassio. Um, about uh, about the music that's being played, wind instruments, and here he puns wind. He um, he uses fart humour with um, wind instruments, saying thereby hangs a tail, as in the tail of um, you know a cow or something with lots of farting, and and they play around with um, tail as in tail and tail as in story, as well. Um, which is very funny, but uh, we start with Iago and Cassio, um, and Cassio is trying to liaise through Iago's wife Amelia to see Desdemona, who can then intervene for him uh, with Othello. And uh, so this is where the scene is set. Uh, the next part of Iago's plan is to uh, have Cassio and, and Desdemona um, working together to try and get uh, Cassio reinstated back. And Iago manages to turn that into Cassio and Desdemona sleeping together, even though it's perfectly innocent. Um, and uh, he starts to poison the mind of Othello against Desdemona. And then in a rather crucial moment. Desdemona drops a handkerchief that had been given to her by Othello and it had been given to Othello by his mother who had had it given to her by an Egyptian who was a sorceress. And, uh, and uh, Amelia picks it up and gives it to Iago and Iago uses this. Uh, he plants it in Cassio's room. Cassio then gives it to his muse um, Bianca, who's a, a courtesan. And then in full view of Othello, she, uh, who's hidden, gives it back to Cassio, and that's the damning proof that Cassio and Desdemona are sleeping together. And it leads to her eventual murder. So, um, it's quite, uh, that's, that's the crucial moment in the play. But let's, um, let's have this uh, light-hearted scene. So Cassio has come in with the musicians saying, Masters, play here, I will content your pain. Something that's brief and bid good moral or general. And in come the clown. In comes the clown. Why, Masters, have, you mu have your instruments been in Naples that they speak in the nose thus? Um, meaning they're very nasal. They're probably playing shawms or something, which is a very nasal instrument. How, sir, how? Are these, I pray you, wind instruments? I marry they are, sir. And thereby hangs a tail. Whereby hangs a tail, sir? Tail is in cow's tail and tail is in story. Marry, sir, by many a wind instrument that I know. So there's a tail that hangs by many a wind instrument. That <laughs> but masters, here's money for you. And the general so likes your music that he desires you for love's sake to make no more noise with it. <laughs> well, so we will not. If you have any music that may not be heard, to it again. But as, as they say, to hear music, the general does not greatly care. Othello doesn't really care for music, so please stop playing or play music that's not. Or um, if you have any music that may not be heard, please play that. We had none such, sir. Well, duh. Then put up your pipes in your bag for all away. Go, vanish into the air, away. Dost thou hear, my honest friend? 
No, I hear not your honest friend, I hear you. Again, very, very funny, very, very funny play on words. Prithee, keep up thy quillets, as in uh, pack up your puns. There's a poor piece of gold for thee. If the gentlewoman that attends the general's wife be stirring, tell her there's one Cassio entreats her a little favour of speech. But they do this. She is stirring, sir. If she will stir hither, I will seem to notify on her. Do good, my friend. And enters Iago. In happy time, Iago, you had not been abed then. Why, no, the day had broke before we parted. I am made a bold, Iago, to send in your wife. Send in to your wife. My suit to her is that she will, to virtuous Desdemona, procure me some access. Iago says, I'll send her to you presently, and I'll devise a mean to draw the moor out of the way that your converse and business may be more free. I humbly thank you for it. I never knew a Florentine more kind and honest. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Good morrow, good lieutenant. I am sorry for your displeasure, but all will sure be well. The general and his wife are talking of it, and she speaks for you stoutly. The moor replies that he, hurt, that he you hurt is of great fame in Cyprus and great affinity, and that in wholesome wisdom he might not but refuse you. But he protests he loves you, and needs no other suitor but his likings to take the safest occasion by the front to bring you in again. Cassio says, Yet I beseech you, if you think fit or that it may be done, give me advantage of some brief discourse with Desdemona alone. Pray you come in, I will bestow you where you shall have time to speak your bosom freely. Cassio says, I'm much bound to you. Then uh, the next scene, which is only a few lines long, is Othello, Iago, and the gentleman. These letters give Iago to the pilot, and by him do my duties to the Senate. That done, I will be walking on the works. Repair there, to, repair there to me. Well, good, my lord, I'll do it. This fortification, gentlemen, so we see it. We'll wait upon your lordship. Okay, so this is... Um, this is a really crucial scene, Act 3, Scene 3. So you have Desdemona, Cassio and Amelia together. And Desdemona says, Be thou assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in thy behalf. Good madam, do I warrant it grieves my husband as if the cause were his. It grieves Iago as if the cause were him. Oh, that's an honest fellow. Jeez, he's got all these people duped. Do not doubt, Cassio, but I will have my lord and you again as friendly as you were. Bounteous madam, whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, he's never anything but your true servant. I know it, I thank you. You do love my lord. You have known him long, and be you well assured. You shall in strangeness know... You shall in strangeness stand no farther off than in a politic distance. So he'll only, he'll only distance from yourself as much as good diplomacy requires. I, my lady, that policy may either last so long or feed upon such nice and waterish diet or breed itself so out of circumstance that I, being absent and my place subspied, my general will forget my love and service. He's worried that um, it'll take so long for Othello to forgive him that uh, the general will forget his previous love and service. Do not doubt that, do not fear that. Uh, before Amelia here, I give thee warrant of thy place. Assure thee, if I do vow friendship, I'll perform it to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I watch him tame and talk him out of patience. His bed shall seem a school, his board a shrift. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore be merry, Cassio, for thy solicitor shall rather die than give thy cause away. And uh, this is what Iago uses. Because um, she's going to be mentioning Cassio so much to her husband in terms of, uh, in her terms, of trying to get them to be friends again. Um, and Iago turns that around as to mean they're sleeping together, but I've said that a few times. Madam, here comes my lord. Madam, I'll take my leave. Why stay and hear me speak? Madam, not now. I'm very ill at ease. I'm fit for mine own purposes. And this, Iago uses. He, he slinks away because he's not yet ready to face Othello. Um, 
and Iago said, you know, well, that's because they're sleeping together. Well, do your discretion. Iago says, ha, I like not that. What dost thou say? Nothing, my lord, or if I know not what. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord, no, sure, I cannot think it, that he would steal away so guilty-like, seeing your coming. I do believe t'was he. How now, my lord? I have been talking with a suitor here. Ah, oh, this is Desdemona. How now, my lord, I have been talking with a suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Othello says, what is it you mean? Why, your lieutenant, Cassio, good my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take. For if he be not one that truly loves you, that errs in ignorance and not in cunning, I have no judgment in an honest face. I prithee, call him back. Went he hence now. Yes, faith, so humbled that he hath left part of his grief with me to suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemon, some other time, but shall it be shortly. The sooner sweet for you. Shall it be tonight at supper? No, not tonight. Tomorrow dinner, then. I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the citadel. Desdemona goes on. Why then? Tomorrow night, or Tuesday morn, or Tuesday noon, or night, on Wednesday morn. I prithee, name the time, and let it, let it not exceed three days. In faith he's penitent, and yet his trespass, in our common reasons, save that they say the wars must make example out of her best, is almost not a fault to incur a private check. So she's saying that, uh, you know, even though the wars must make example of it, he was drunk, and that's that's not that's not a huge that's not the hugest fault to ever um, warrant private criticism. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello. I wonder in my soul what you would ask me that I should deny or stand so memoring on. What Michael Cassio that came a wooing with you, and many a time when I have spoke of you dispraisingly hath taken your part, to have so much to do to bring him in. By a lady, I could do much. Pretty, no more. Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Why, this is not a boon. Tis as I should entreat you wear your gloves, or feed on nourishing dishes, or keep you warm, or sue to you to do a peculiar profit to your own person. Nay, when I have a suit wherein I mean to touch your love indeed, it shall be full of poise and difficult weight, and fearful to be granted. I will deny thee nothing, whereon I do beseech thee, grant me this, to leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No, farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona, I'll come to thee straight. Amelia, come, be as your fancies teach you, whate'er you be, I am obedient. Which leaves um, Iago alone with Othello. So, excellent wretch. Uh, wretch being an affectionate term. Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee, and when I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble, no, my noble lord, what dost thou say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did from first to last. Why dost thou ask? But for a satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. What of thy thought, Iago? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very oft. Indeed, indeed, I indeed. Discernest thou aught in that? Is he not honest? Honest, my lord. Honest? I, honest. My lord, for aught I know, what dost thou think? Think, my lord. And this is where um, Iago really does a number on Othello. Think, my lord, by heaven thou echoest me as if there was some monster in thy thought too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say even now. Thou likest not that when Cassia left my wife. What didst not like? And when I told thee he was of my counsel, in my whole course of wooing thou criest, Indeed, and didst contract and purse thou thy brow together, as if thou, hadst, if thou then had shut up in thy brain some horrible conceit some horrible thought if thou dost love me show me thy thought my lord you know I love you I think thou dost and for I know thou art full of love and honesty and weighest thy words before thou givest them breast, breath therefore these stops of thine these hell hesitations of his fright me the more for such things in a false dis nor disloyal knave are tricks of custom and they are in the case of uh, Iago, but in a man that's just, there, 
They're close dilations, working from the heart that passion cannot rule. They're involuntary. We all know that it's not the case. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn that I think he is honest. I think so too. Men should be what they seem, or those that be not, would they might seem none. Uh, this, this is very crucial. If only those that who are not what they seem didn't seem to be what they are not. Certain men should be what they seem. Why then, I think Cassio is an honest man. Othello. Nay, yet there's more in this, I prithee, speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate, and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. Good my lord, pardon me, though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to all that slaves are free to. In this case, he's not obligated to reveal his inner thoughts, something about which even slaves have a choice. Utter my thoughts, why, say they are vile and false, as where that... Where's that palace whereunto foul things sometimes intrude not? Who has that breast so pure but some uncleanly apprehension keep leets and law days and in sessions sit with meditations lawful? So even in a very pure breast uh, can still have unclean uh, thoughts. Thou dost conspire against thy friend Iago, if thou but thinkst him wronged and makest his ear a stranger to thy thoughts. I do beseech you, though I perchance am vicious in my guess, uh, mistaken in his guess, as I confess, it is my nature's play to spy into abuses, and oft my jealousy shapes faults that are not. That's your wisdom then. From one that so perfectly, imperfectly conceits would take no notice, nor build yourself a trouble out of his scattering and unsure observance. It were not for your quiet, nor your good, nor for my manhood, honesty and wisdom to let you know my thoughts. So he's saying that he sees, um, he sees bad things even when they're not there. Shapes faults that aren't. He, and he tries to tell Othello that because of this, you know, he can't trust. He can't trust him, which he shouldn't. Um, you know, that... Uh, He's saying it's not, it's not good for Othello to let him know his thoughts. Um, and then this is uh, quite an interesting um, discussion on reputation. What dost thou mean? Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse steals trash, tis something, nothing. Tis mine, tis his, and has been slaved to thousands. But he that filches from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. Which is interesting because he's, um, he's actually himself damaging Cassio's good name. By heaven I'll know thy thoughts. You cannot, if my heart were in your hand, nor shall not whilst tis in my custody. O oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That uh, jealousy... It, jealousy feeds on a person's heart, but uh, at the same time it destroys it. That cookold lives, in, cookold lives in bliss, who certain of his fate loves not his wronger. So the cuckoo who doesn't know he's been cuckolded, um, you know, I mean, he's almost better off. But, oh, what damned minutes tells he o'er who dotes yet doubts, suspect yet fondly loves. So, um, but uh, far worse is uh, a jealous person who, you know, loves his wife yet thinks that his wife's cheating on him. Oh, misery. Poor and content is rich and rich enough, but rich as fineless is as poor as winter. To him that ever fears he shall be poor. Good God, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy.